Hello everybody and welcome to the Coastal Radio DAB Football Preview Show. I'm Dan. And I'm Connor. And today we're also joined by a very, very special guest, George, of the It's Ramos YouTube channel. Hi guys. So today we've got a very, very special preview show for these guys. Obviously the big derby away at Preston at Deepdale. So just give us some of your thoughts, George. What, what's your thoughts going into this game? I think, you know, it goes without saying it's going to be a cagey affair tomorrow. It won't be one of those open games of football. These derby games never are. I think both sides will come out a bit nervous. No one wants to put their first foot wrong. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see how Blackpool and, and Mick McCarthy set up, whether he's just going to go for it because obviously they need the points on the board more than Preston, who are comfortably mid-table and don't really have much to play for. Whereas Blackpool, you, you really need to get three or four points at least from these next few games yeah, against both Preston and Cardiff. So I think he's got no choice but to go for it, especially away from home and the way that they played there last season. Yeah. They won't want a repeat of that yeah. performance. Do you, do you think it's going to be an improvement over last season? I think so. I think the players know how much this fixture means. They won't want to experience a hostile atmosphere like last season at Deep Dell where you know, they're all singing, Blackpool get battered for the last 20 minutes of the game. And yeah. it mustn't have been enjoyable to play. And a lot of those players are still there now. And I think they know it's now or never really for victories yeah. as well to have any chance of staying up. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we've been saying this for weeks that it's now or never. I mean, points needed to be getting picked up a, a long time ago, but there needs to be bare minimum a point here if there's chance of survival. Obviously, the uh, the Reading being docked on points, that might help Blackpool, but what's your thoughts, Connor? Well, I, I think it's an important game. We've, we've got to win it. It's a must win yeah. for them. But uh, obviously, Reading be ducked points, so they'll be on like, the same points as Cardiff, so it could go anywhere. It could be Blackpool rely, relying on point, like teams to lose points this season yeah. or get deducted points. But obviously they need to turn the poor form around this like now. Yeah, obviously Mick McCarthy's side won the previous fixture back in October under former boss Michael Appleton. Uh, 4-2 game. Give us your thoughts on that game, George. I mean, it was one of the only sort of enjoyable moments of the season, really, given how poor and miserable the second half of the season has been particularly. But a repeat of that performance wouldn't be too bad, would it, away at, at deep middle? Yeah. But... Uh, I, Some think, I think we just need to turn up and put yeah. a performance <laughs> like, like that game. You know, I don't even think we particularly played that well, but we were we were first to the second balls. We actually turned up and put the commitment in to get mm. us over the line. Yeah. And I think that showed that you don't particularly have to be playing good football to, yeah. to win these derby games. Preston were arguably the better side at the start of mm. that game. And um, Blackpool ended up going on to win 4-2. So I think as long as... Either side can sort of keep the scoreline within reach tomorrow, which I think it will be a close, cagey game. Yeah. I think it'll come down to a moment of individual quality from each side, mm. and obviously it's going to be tough for either side to get it over the line. Yeah, I mean, if you had to give a score prediction, what would you be going with? I mean, as a Blackpool fan myself, I've got to be positive, yeah. and I'm going to go for a 1 0 Blackpool to nick it in the second half. Yeah. Late on, I think it's going to be one of those little chances, and it'll come down to one moment for either side at the end. Yeah. So. Personally, I'm going to go for a, a nil-nil draw. I think, yeah, like you say, I think a cagey affair, neither side will break the deadlock, really. I mean, what about you, Connor? I think it might be far-fetched, but I reckon it'll be a 4-1. 4-1. <laughs> it might be far-fetched <laughs> for Blackpool. I reckon they, they need to score goals just just to show that they, they want to be in this league. And, like, obviously, they need to fight. Obviously, they scored four back in October, but... They need something to bounce back on to go into some decent form because obviously they've got about eight games left, yeah. seven games after this to like to stay up, obviously. Yeah, and what what about that last game against Coventry? I mean, it doesn't give much hope going into this tie, does it? Really, it wasn't a great performance from Blackpool. No, it was it was really poor. I mean, I think we actually started the game quite well. In in fairness, we were matching Coventry and mm. potentially were the better side in the first half. I think even some of their fans have admitted yeah. that. And there's that potential for the second penalty and some decisions might not have gone Blackpool's way, but potential just seem to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can, we can you know, highlight these potential decisions that we should have had and could have had, yeah. but at the end Need of the day, the harsh nature of the championship yeah. kicked in in the second yeah. half. Some great quality goals from Coventry, and that's what teams do to you if you don't take your chances, especially yeah. good teams, even if they're not playing particularly well. Yeah. And that's a worry we've potentially got with Preston tomorrow. And yeah. They are a decent side. We shouldn't kid ourselves. You yeah. know, they're only seven points off the playoffs in, yeah. in 12. And I just think if we give them you know, the amount of space and time we've been giving teams this season, mm. they are going to hurt us. Yeah. 
to be fair, they've got the worst poor, poor, like poor of home form. They've got worse than Blackpool as well, I think. I think they're 23rd in a poor home run, I think, yeah. what I've been hearing. But obviously, Blackpool are trying a lot to do the, the first double over them since 73, 74 season. Yeah, and uh, the last, last time they won at Deepdale in 2009, when they won 1-0 thanks to a Charlie Adam goal. So, obviously, and there was that one in 2013, Blackpool lost there, and then last season they lost there. So, They've, it's a long time since they've won it deep now. Or the one, the most notable one was that West Hulahan chip yeah. down, down chip against them. They only really like to pick up eight points out of the last five games. However, Blackpool have only picked up four out of the last five, which is obviously that big 6-1 against QPR, which is a massive. Um, what was your thoughts of that 6-1 win and how did that change, or did that change your mind going into the next few games I mean it felt like you know when fans were starting to sort of lose hope again we come out with a performance like that is very similar to the Stoke game in that it almost gave us a lifeline and that you know we actually can collect points this season and then straight back down to earth again and it felt like that with QPR you know absolutely thrashed them played excellent football we could have had seven or eight in that game uh, hit the post as well and then straight to that Coventry game and it's just like back to reality but if we can put in an attacking performance like that, that's what I will say is positive going into this Preston game, and that we were good going forward against Coventry, despite only scoring that one goal. So I think in the last three games, we have shown signs of attacking intent. Hmm. So if we can bring that into Preston, we've got every chance of getting an early goal. Yeah. So do, would you say that the QPR game was a bit of a fluke, or you don't think? Do you not think so? I mean, on the balance of results, it, it looks very much like a fluke, but I think... I can see that there's clear progress there in terms mm. of the way that we've started games a lot quicker than we initially did under McCarthy yeah. when he first came in. So I think that gives you every fighting chance of, of taking the lead and holding on to that lead is another story at Deepdale especially. Yeah. But I think if we can get an early goal, anyone will take that, any Wapple fan. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely that attacking football that's needed here, really. So obviously Jordan Thornley's back. He'll probably be in the side on Saturday. How do you think that'll affect the game, George? I think it's massive. He's, he's been one of the unsung heroes in, in this Blackpool side for the season. Just goes about his business, solid performances every time he plays, you know, without people sort of giving him the, the credit he deserves. And mm. he's been a great partner, you know, to start the season to Big Marvin, now leading that back line. I think it's massive that he's back because, you know, defensively we've been poor, obviously conceding those four to Coventry just earmarks that. But... Without Thornley, we really could have been in for a, a bit of an issue at the back yeah. against Preston. But I do think him and Nelson are a good pairing together. Mm. And that, you know, between them, if they can sort that communication out in the back line, mm. I'd, I'd be pretty comfortable with them too at the back. Yeah, Thornley, he, he really puts his body on the line for the club. Like, he always seems to be there cleaning up. And, and like you said, yeah, he doesn't really get the recognition he deserves, really. Black haven't won away since the 29th of October. Uh, How's that? How how are you finding that going to all these away games? Obviously, they've, I think they've picked up two points since then. I mean, it's it's not exactly the most inspiring start, is it? Given that you know that was last year, so twenty twenty three, we just haven't won away mm. from home. But I, I don't think it's too much of a worrying statistic because it just reflects our form in the league in general. You know, yeah. our home record is not much better, despite yeah. picking up a few more wins there, and it. It's not like we're sort of in a decent position in the table. It shows just how the whole season. Yeah. Do, do, and, uh, do you think they could change change that this weekend? I think we absolutely can because I think form goes out the window in, in derby yeah. matches. Yeah. Ryan Lowe, Preston's boss, will know that as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes the same for Preston's home record. We shouldn't be looking into that too much because mm. yeah. in a derby game like this... Yeah, neither side can underestimate here. the other. Right, now onto our predicted lineup. So, who are we going to go for as goalkeeper? I think... There's only one man you can go for. It's got to be Chris Maxwell. I think we can all agree on that. He's been the number one for Blackpool for the majority of the campaign. And I think to throw Grimshaw in now just wouldn't be logical. Wouldn't be right. yeah. People could argue say that Grimshaw would, is the better keeper, but obviously Maxwell's the better. I think Maxwell's probably the better shot stopper than... I, I think it's difficult. I think we've got two very, very good keepers. Personally, I f- I do think Grimshaw is better, but Maxwell's still a great keeper. That it's been, you know, like, yeah, I wouldn't. It's been doing bits for us. Yeah, um, yeah. I think we've managed the the Grimshaw situation yeah. not very well. Mm, I get you he's can probably going to leave. You, now. you can only yeah. have one starting goalkeeper. I yeah. get that, but it's like Grimshaw's the one for the future. He's almost mm. ten years younger than Maxwell. Yeah, and yet he's going to be the one going out the door. Yeah, we could have developed him even mm. further and yeah. sold him for big money. But yeah, I agree with that. It seems like that won't be the case. Yeah. Right now, on to our Defense. two centre halves. 
So I'm I'm going to go for the partnership of Thornley and Nelson, as I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Great that Thornley's back available. He's mm-hmm. been the unsung hero at the back. And Nelson, in fairness to him, he's been very solid since he's yeah. come in. I don't think anyone can... No, I, can I think he's been good. Him, really. Um, it gives us, I think he gives us a fair bit of defensive security, apart from his clearances that just go high in the sky. <laughs> and to like to do every few games. I don't want one of those well, tomorrow. That seems to be a thing with most of the players, just booting it, not even looking like just... Yeah, hoof ball really, doesn't it? Yeah, but what what about you guys? Would you change that defensive? Nah, I would agree with that defensive I'd probably, agree, I'd probably agree with that. Maybe depending if any other players could put Connolly there, depend depending on obviously whoever we put in midfield. Yeah, I think Connolly's a good player, he's very versatile, mm. so mm-hmm. he could do a job if he's called on. Full backs, who who do you think? I'm I'm gonna go for Andy Lyons at right back. He's yeah. really coming into his own, getting a few goals in recent games, obviously. That brace against QPR was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I think left back, I'd actually go for James Husband. I'm, mm. I'm going to play a 4 3 3. I think yeah. we've got to take it to yeah, Preston. Definitely, yeah. uh, I don't want to see a back five. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we could see one because does. he might be a bit conservative in his approach. But no, but there's no no there's room for that at the moment, no. I don't think. I think Preston are playing a back five, or I think. Oh, I've been, think been hearing that they might be playing a back mm. five, or you know, you kind of three yeah. centre arms. We don't just want to cancel each other out, though, do we, with mm. back fives? Yeah. And it's like. I think husband is, you know, I don't feel really secure of any of our fullbacks to be honest. <laughs> but I do feel like husband, if even if he does just clip the ball down the line and mm. clear it, I feel safer with him at the back than yeah. Tom Thompson. Yeah. So I'd, I'd go for husband. Yeah, I'd I'd probably disagree with you there. I'd probably say right back Jordan Gabriel. He's it's good good right back, but. I'm I'm unsure between Lions and husband. Obviously, husband with the experience and that, but Lions is. Been doing well, isn't he? Obviously, but I think I'd have to say Lions at left back. What do you think? I, I would say yeah, Lions husband probably the best option we've got. Fair enough. Right, right. so midfield, what what are you thinking, George? Well, I think obviously this one depends on how we set up. Like we could have Connolly in the DM role, like we have in recent weeks, two centre mids in front of him. But I'm gonna go for a four three three, which I, it's my like preferred lineup. I know it's probably not gonna <laughs> really, happen, but I'd go for Connolly as your defensive minded player in there. I just think he offers more than Dougal. Dougal's been a bit sloppy and lacks in midfield yeah. this season. I just think Connolly is that better player. He's more likely to get stuck in a bit more high intensity, mm. and I'd go for Patino in there. I think he's a great ball carrier. Mm. Amazing in the transitions, and I think you've got to include him. He clearly showed that he's ready for these derby games in the mm. fixture earlier in the season with that yeah. vital goal. Yeah. And I'd actually put Fiorini in there as your creative, attacking-minded player. Yeah. I think he can be a bit hit and miss at times, and he's got to turn up in this game. But I think when he does, he's fantastic, and he gives you that bit of flair going mm. forward. Yeah. So they might have had a bit of confidence after that goal they scored for Scotland's under-21s, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, a fantastic it? finish from the edge of the box. Yeah, it's great. But what about you guys? Would you change that midfield? How do you think we need to approach this this game, given that it's a big derby? I'd thing? probably say Connolly, Con- put Connolly in there as a defensive, like he protects the centre halves and all that stuff. But um, I'm, I'm unsure. I do like Patino, but I feel like he might, after obviously what he did at Preston, he might get nailed by the players. <laughs> he might get Minute nailed. Long, just get I feel like they will smashed. target Patino, and don't be yeah. surprised if and you he see can him get he, he can get bullied quite easily off the ball. Mm. I think. Well, to be fair, if, if he does get nailed, the referee will probably see him. Obviously, I think like that might be kicks. one of McCarthy's like reasons to not start him in this game mm. because of that. Uh, and obviously, you've got to remember that when he did start the last derby fixture, we were under Appleton. Mm. But they actually did try and like rattle Patino, yeah. and, like bashed him on the head after yeah. he got the he had, Yeah, goal. he did have a very good performance against Preston. Tried to get him sent off, so they're going to target him definitely. Mm. But maybe that will play in our favour if mm. you know we get can someone get sent off. Heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I probably say I have a. F- a Fiorini in there for obviously he play, he's played he's been playing well recently but I'd, I'd I'd like to also obviously those two lads obviously want to stop but I do like to see Dougal he's just got the experience you know, you know what I mean he's strong he's like a strong midfielder but obviously he's, obviously he's been a bit lazy recently I oh. think McCarthy's got some decent choice actually mm. because we've also got like you say Dougal Sonny Carey and Keshi Anderson mm. on the bench so. Keshi Anderson yeah, isn't that he's returning about Keshi. I mean, any, of, any of them <laughs> yeah. could uh, yeah. but whether Anderson can step in and do a full 90 minutes yet mm. in a game of this intensity mm. is yet to be seen but maybe off the bench he can you know, come yeah. in and be effective yeah yeah and for the wingers who, who, who are you going to say well I think I'm going for it I'm just gunning for this game and I'm going to go for on one wing you've got to have Morgan Rogers. I think he's arguably been our best player under Mick McCarthy when he's been used right and since he's actually come into the lineup. 
even in games that we've lost, you know, he sort of looks like the only one that's had an inkling of scoring. Mm. Fantastic in the last game against Coventry. Obviously won us the penalty, mm. uh, set up another chance that Yates missed. And then on the other wing, I'd actually go for Jan Pervader now. Mm. If there's any time to bring him back into the team, it is now. Yeah, He'll give us that flair. He'll pin back the Preston defenders and hopefully yeah. give us a bit of pressure. Uh, and I just think he's more of a confidence player than Josh Bowler at yeah. the moment. Who's yeah, I think since Bowler's him. come back, he's not been his, his old self, really. You could arguably say you could put Pervader in the midfield if you're playing mm. a 4-3-3 four, uh, four, three, three attack. Yeah. Yeah. Same with put, Rogers, yeah. You could put Pervader in the cam, and I, I'd probably say Morgan Rogers on the left and Bowler on the right. I reckon mm. Bowler will turn up. And Pervader in the yeah. midfield. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, that. I, I think that'd be quite good because we do need like a lot of attacking ideas. I do reckon Ball will turn up for what for? I reckon I'll turn up for this game. I think we've got a good few options in terms of the attacking changes we can make, and that, like you say, both Rogers and Pervader have played midfield, like central midfield roles for us this season. Mm. Done quite well there, but I think it's just a question of whether McCarthy uses the creative players or whether they're mm. all on the bench until yeah. we're like three 0 oh, down. No, there's no. <laughs> No, again, there's no room for that. We need creativity, need goals. Yeah, like yeah. we can't be going all defensive and just bringing on yeah. creative players when we're already two nil down it's, in the 80th minute. It's going to be interesting to see how we set up because I think in any regular derby game you just sort of play conservative, but I think in this one, like you've just got to go for it. What mm. do we have to lose yeah. now? We've got nothing to lose. Yeah, true. I think I think we've got obviously got after this game seven games left, and it's important. And obviously, we've got to, like good. Good teams like we've got Norwich to play, West Brom to play, Millwall to play. Yeah, we don't want it coming down to that last game of the season, having to go away to Norwich and having to get a three points or a point, and that you know needing to keep us up. Where do you where do you see us getting points from for the rest of the season now? I think the next two home games against Cardiff and Wigan are absolutely massive. Mm. To be honest, I think if you don't get four points from Preston and Cardiff, then you're looking like you're down. But mm. I think, to be honest, I can see us drawing that Cardiff game mm. um, or maybe a narrow defeat, but yeah. it all depends. This Preston game is the massive confidence builder. If you win yeah. this, the energy it will like, yeah. inflict into the fans mm. and around the place. I think the fixtures, the next few games are looking nice for yeah. us with Cardiff and Wigan, mm-hmm. but like you say, if we don't get three points out of at least one or two of those, yeah. you can't be relying on the Millwall yeah. and Norwich games yeah. to stay up. Yeah. Preston fans, comment down below what your score prediction is going to be. <laughs> To arguably, there's no other option for striker. I reckon we can all agree on the striker, big man Jerry Yates. <laughs> it's got to be JY9, I suppose, <laughs> but I think you know he's got two in his last two, albeit both from the penalty spot. But maybe that's a bit of confidence into him. Mm. And if he gets another penalty, you'd probably rely on him scoring that, yeah. especially in front of the deep down crowd. I don't know whether the nerves <laughs> get to him, but. Maybe he'll no, chip I don't it. think they would. I think if he asked, maybe all. he'll chip it like yeah. Les Hulahan. You never know. We, we all know how uh, Jerry Ace loves the derby. You know how much he wants to fight for the team. He, we all know that he, he wants. He just runs constantly, and that's why the fans, I think, they stick with Jerry Ace. And that you know, as a striker that hasn't scored in seventeen games, you're going to get a lot of fans on your back. But he always puts in that hundred and ten percent. He chasing mm. every loose ball. He, and some fans even say, you know, he's one of the only players that really works, mm. especially when things aren't going mm. well. So I think. If we can get a bit of that intensity tomorrow, then we've got to come out in Preston's faces from the off. I think yeah. take it to them because it's their home ground, it's their house, as you say. Like, yeah. they're going to be the ones trying to pin us back and mm. getting us under the crowd's atmosphere. So we're going to have to really just get stuck in straight away. Yeah. But do you think potentially, obviously, obviously, once the season ends, if Blackpool do go down, do you see like Jerry Yates leaving? I think it's hard to tell. I think even if we stay up, he he could leave because he's been here for a good few seasons now and I think he might just want to drop down to League One and potentially get his confidence back. You know, a 20-goal season with someone. uh, Maybe one of the relegated sides even or Mm. one of the big teams that might not go up like a derby or someone Mm. like that. But I don't know. I'd I'd love it if he stayed and I think the day he leaves will be a heartbreaking day. (laughs) It'll be worse than relegation the day Jerry (laughs) is for me. I reckon reckon he'll stay because, you know what I mean, he's like... One of those type of players, like he's obviously not from Blackpool, but he's you can tell that he has yeah, the he's got a good connection. He's got Mr. Blackpool in this team, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. So. Mm. so this has been the Coastal Radio DAB football preview show. No. Thanks for watching and ch- <laughs> just start, just... right, go on. So this has been the Coastal Radio DAB football preview show. Thanks for watching and make sure you follow us on social media at Coastal Radio DAB. 
Also, download our app now available on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of the other Falco's football preview shows. And a big thanks to George of It's Ramos YouTube channel for coming on today. Check out his channel, link's down in the description. Thank you.